Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again. I want to give you some first impressions of these Strength Co. plates, which I'm the proud owner of 900 pounds worth or so. So I guess, spoiler alert, I like these a lot. I want to give you just some general insight into them after having owned them a couple of weeks and also answer the big question of why I got rid of my Rogue Six Shooters. Now, to be honest, I wasn't even really considering the Strength Co. for a while. They'd been out for a couple of months in terms of their plates. Didn't really give them a look. I saw some comments in the comment section of some videos from you guys saying, hey, take a look at these, or what do you think about these? And I was just like, I don't know. I haven't really looked at them too much. Of course, Coop has them from Garage Gym Reviews because he has everything, but he doesn't really lift, so he's not a good source of information for that kind of stuff. Love you, Coop. Um, but it wasn't until I heard them on the Massonomics podcast, the owner Grant was on there talking about the process of getting these up and running, some of the issues they have, some of the stuff with foundries, how these are made, and you know me, I'm a dude that sits in his basement taking macro shots of barbell neural for fun. Any kind of shop talk like that is going to get me very interested, and that's where I really started taking an interest in the Strength Co. And Grant was actually nice enough at the suggestion of Tommy and Tanner from Massonomics, thanks boys, who said, hey, send Brandon a couple of plates and see what he thinks. He sent me a couple of their change plates, which probably was a great marketing move on his part because I got a little taste. And I was like, ooh, those are good ass plates. And I ended up ordering a bunch more. So I ordered eight pairs of 45s, two pairs of 25s, two more pairs of 10s, another pair of fives, another pairs of two and a half. And here I am at like 800, 900 pounds worth of plates. And I gotta say, like I said, I like them a lot. Now, the main reason I switched from the Rogue Six Shooters to these is twofold. Number one, I'm really kind of trying to focus on made in USA stuff where I can for my gym. Not saying I'm only gonna do Made in USA, but that's something I'm gonna take into consideration this year as I buy new equipment. And as much as I love those Rogue Six Shooters, those were made in China. So I wanted plates that were made in the USA if I could for my main plate set. And I say that because right now I have like six different types of plates in my gym, it's driving me bonkers. But I really wanted my main set to be made in the USA. The other thing I'm really trying to focus on over the course of this year for my own gym is really going for an overall aesthetic. So I'm really putting my money into this whole Stormtrooper look, right? The white with black accents. You guys saw the Rogue Rack I just built out to a six post. I have some other cool pieces of equipment coming in soon, which you'll see videos on. But those Rogue Six Shooters were gray, didn't really match. I wanted some black looking plates. The E-coat here on the Strength Coat plates look phenomenal. So made in the USA, machined, which means they're gonna be accurate, really tolerant. I'll talk about that in a second. And also the fact that these have these black e-code that kind of matches the aesthetic I'm going for. The six shooters had to go, the strength codes have then replaced them. But if you're interested in the six shooters, I would recommend them. I love those plates, they're great. These just kind of fit more what I was going for. Now, if you know your plates, you're probably also thinking, well, why didn't you get the Rogue Deep Dish? Because they're very similar. And I agree, they are, right? When you take a look at them, those ones are made in the USA. They're machined, just like these ones are. And in this case, they also have a black e-coat. And I thought about it. I hemmed and hawed about this or that. I messaged Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. I messaged Adam from Garage Gym Lab. I asked a bunch of people, you know, what do you think I should do? Give me some feedback, boys. And after some careful deliberations, I ended up with the Strength Co. And again, for two main reasons. Number one, the Rogues, while cheaper overall, after shipping, they don't offer any change plates right now. They don't have two and a half, fives, or tens, which mean I'd probably have to go out and buy some Strength Co. plates anyways, as a lot of people do. They buy the Rogue Deep Dish main sets and the Strength Co. change plates. And I didn't really want to mix and match plates too much. More on that in just a second. The biggest reason for me not going with the Rogue plates is because the fact that their 45s are so damn wide. And I know what you're thinking, Brandon, deep dish, not little dish, skinny dish, medium dish, deep dish. Those are supposed to be wide plates, and I get it. Aesthetically, they look cool in a vacuum, meaning by themselves, a single pair of 45 deep dish or 100 pound deep dish, they look really cool. When you're lifting 495 or 585, so you have five or six plates per side on a barbell, each one of those 45s is almost three quarters of an inch wider than the Strength Co. 45 pound plate. Meaning that after four or five plates, you're talking like four or five inches almost of extra room taken up on that shaft. And four or five inches, I don't know what you heard or where you're from, that's a lot of size, baby. So I didn't wanna take up that much bar real estate, and especially as I look at the most expensive weight tree in the world, right up to my right, I wanted to get a lot of 45 pound plates because I like to superset in things like benching, deadlifting, squatting, rowing, 
just to help expedite my training and I'd be able to fit roughly like 645s less or 345s per side less on the most expensive weight tree in the world. So for those reasons, I went with the Strength Co. Now truth be told, I did hem and haw on the Strength Co ones too because I hadn't actually seen their 45s. I wasn't as familiar with them as a company outside of the change plates that I had. But the biggest deterrent was the fact that they did not offer 35 pound plates. And some of you are thinking, good, who needs them? This guy does. I find 35s extremely useful. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know this. They didn't have 35 pound plates, but that was a minor inconvenience compared to all the other benefits that I felt like these ones offered. Now, I will say, I went the opposite route. And again, I talked about mixing and matching a little bit where most people will get the Rogue set with the Strength Co. change plates. I got the Strength Co. set with the Rogue Deep Dish 35s. And Surprisingly, they're actually not that deep. They're about the same width as the 45 pound plates, so they go extremely well. The finish looks extremely similar. The main difference is just the Rogue plates have a machined rear face of the plate where the Strength Co. has a textured amount. Overall, they look extremely well. They match extremely nice. And I don't think anyone would really be able to tell unless they look at the manufacturer name on the inside face plate. And then this way too, it lets me compare and contrast the Rogues and the Strength Co. one. So, I got my 35 fix and my Strength Co. others. So if you're considering these, I like them a lot. I talked a little bit about how these are machined as well. What that means is two main things for you. Number one, they're very tolerant on the actual sleeve. The hole here, just big enough to get it in. I'm talking tight, super tight. Almost as a detriment, meaning getting plates on and off this bar is a little bit of work. You gotta be very good about pulling it off and especially if you have a ribbed barbell sleeve, you're gonna hear that bad boy and you're not gonna like it if that noise annoys you. You're gonna hear it because these bars and plates sit so well together. You will also see a lot of that black e-coat on the center hub coming off on your bar, so make sure you wipe it down after the first couple times you use it and also don't be surprised when you see it wear out in the middle. That's just going to happen over time, but super good snug fit on here which means that when you're doing things like deadlifts, especially the plates aren't gonna rattle around as much as they used to, which is thus going to leave these with an impression that they're actually not as loud. And I'll play a clip here or there where you can see some of this stuff where my kids are sleeping, I'm deadlifting decently heavy weight, and these things aren't making that much noise again because the tight tolerance and the fact that these plates are really packed together and they don't move. The other thing with these being machined is you're going to find that the overall weight tolerance on them is pretty accurate. They're listed as plus or minus 2%. I weighed every single 45 pound plate that I have, which is 16 in total, and they're all within that plus or minus 2%. I did have like two, I think, that were at the very bottom number of that, which is 44.1. Uh, all of them were though within that, none were over or under, so no real big outliers. I think that, again, the biggest variance was at 0.9 pounds under. As far as over, I think the heaviest one was like 0.4 pounds over. So on average, they're like 44.7 pounds, which to me is great, extremely accurate in that regard as well. And I like them a lot. In comparison, the Rogue Six Shooters were plus or minus 1%. They were more accurate in that regards, but again, not made in the USA, didn't fit the aesthetic I was going for. So these ones work great and I, I like them a lot. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about getting these on and off a weight tree. You know, can you do it with one hand? And to me, I think you have to two-hand this. I don't know if that's a thing, like people really care if you have to do that or not. I think you have to two-hand these just because they sit so snug on things where you have to get a good grip in order to tug it off, if you will. Uh, but they are quite comfortable with the lip here. I find it's a good thickness. And again, if you listen to that Massonomics podcast with Grant from the Strength Co. on it, he talks about how some of the first iterations the lip was too fat, too wide, that kind of thing. Really nerdy stuff, but stuff that I'm really into. So highly recommend that listen. Just skip over the part where he talks about how he hates 35s because I'm gonna pretend that doesn't exist. Um, but overall, I like these plates a lot. Now, that's not to say they're, they're not uh, anything wrong with it. There are some things that you know I noticed, and you probably will too, and that is with the E-coat finish. I noticed this on both the Strength Coat plates and the Rogue ones. There's just some inconsistencies here and there. That leads me to believe that this is part of the process because if it happens to Strength Coat and Rogue, chances are that it's gonna happen to any E-Coat plate that you'll see out there, especially this black E-Coat. I think it's minor overall. I don't think it's going to really contribute anything to the plate deteriorating or any impact to it. Although if you wanna be a Chad or Karen, I'm sure you could probably complain to somebody about it, but you won't notice it unless you're really up close and really looking. This one in particular is fine. It's just a few outliers that might have a spot or two, and I'll show you some quick pictures, I'm sure, during the course of this video. 
Uh, an interesting thing I found about these when I unboxed them was the fact that there was no kind of protective layer between them and the cardboard. Not a big deal because everything showed up really well, really packaged really tight as well. No problems, no damage. Uh, but the cardboard tended to really rub off on some of the textured finishes here of these Strength Co plates, which really resulted in me having to wipe down each plate before use just because they looked really dirty. Again, kind of an inconvenience, not gonna harm the plate. Just something I noticed as a weird quirk, if you will. Shout out to Doug DeMuro for that. Uh, but overall, really happy with these. Now, the only other con I can think of with these particular plates that's kind of probably gonna turn most people off is the price. So they're not cheap overall. For a 45 pound plate, it roughly ends up being like $2.12 per pound. The shipping on these is not the best, but I think a lot of us are spoiled by shipping, whether we're looking at companies that ship for free, which isn't really free, it's just the equipment you're buying is really cheap and they just overcharge there in order to get it to you for free or dealing with someone like Rogue who typically can ship pretty good rates in bulk, especially once you hit that freight number. I think for the Strength Coast sake, they recently opened an East Coast distribution center, which is going to help a lot of us on the East Coast like I am. But again, price it out. And for a lot of this stuff, the more you buy, the cheaper shipping becomes. If you're just looking for like one pair of 45s, which I think retails for like 190 bucks, you're probably gonna pay almost half that again in just shipping alone. So that's just a catalyst to buy more weights, which is probably why I have 900 pounds worth. But again, overall, I like these plates a lot. They match the aesthetic I go for. Made in the USA, they're machined, super nice, have nothing but good things to say. I would highly recommend them if you're interested in something like this, which again, made in the USA, machined, e-coat, kind of this old school look, but very high-end finishes. These are probably the best option that you can get in that regard. If I missed anything or have any other questions about them, leave them in the comments section below. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.